If you've always dealt with the bank directly and never used the broker, well that's your first problem because a banker can only use one product. It's not always about the number of properties, it's about the value of the properties. And you should never compare yourself to others because that's one way to really, really, really deflate yourself. You'll maximize your borrowing potential under a major lender, let's call it a tier one lender. Then you'll go to your second tier lenders. Then you'll go to your third tier lenders. Good day everyone and thanks for joining me in another episode of The Mortgage Chat. Now today I want to talk about how to maximize your borrowing power under your individual name using first, second and third tier lenders. If you've always dealt with the bank directly and never used a broker, well that's your first problem because a banker can only use one product. What happens when you've maxed out your borrowing power with that one lender? There's no options for you or there's no options for them sorry to give you second tier and third tier lenders if you want to maximize your borrowing power. So now let me give you an example of how far you can stretch yourself under individual borrowing power when you use first, second and third tier lenders. Let's just say as example, we have a couple named Jack and Jill, both on $100,000 each, full-time workers. They got a property worth $2 million that they purchased 10 years ago and now they only have a loan of $400,000 for argument's sakes. They have one kid and the only other debt they have is a credit card with a $5,000 credit card limit. And because they haven't invested the last 10 years, finally they've snapped and go, do you know what? Let's start investing in properties. So let me show you the difference between using a broker and using a banker. And let's say for argument's sakes, they're using a banker first. So if you're watching this video, I actually got a whiteboard in front of me. Now, based on the existing debt levels of $400,000, one dependent and one credit card with $5,000 credit card limit, and assuming the existing loan is with a major lender, call it ANZ, St. George, CBA, whatever you want to call it as long as it's a major lender. With a rental income of $500 per week, they can actually afford another loan for $525,000, which is not bad. $525,000, you can actually buy a decent property in interstate with good yields. But the problem arises when they wanna go for the second investment property. Based on a major lender, the maximum they can borrow with a major lender for their second investment property was only around $150,000, which these days gets you nothing. So if they've always only used the banker and have no interest in using a broker, they would have been stuck with just one property because the next property where they can only spend $150,000 gets them nowhere. If you use the broker, for example, the broker would have taken you to a second tier lender, okay? Now with a second tier lender, with a rental income of $450,000, you're actually able to borrow another $430,000. And that's actually still a decent loan amount to purchase something in interstate. But it doesn't stop there. Now, if your broker is smart enough and they structure all your existing loans properly, they can actually go one more. And they can actually go to a third tier lender and with a $500,000 rental income, they can actually get you another loan for $500,000. So the difference between using a banker and a broker is a banker can probably get you one investment property while a broker can get you one, two, three with different lenders. And I use different lenders because obviously T1 lenders will have better rates. T2 lenders will have slightly higher rates but still give you the borrowing power. So with T3 lenders, yes, their rates are gonna be a lot more higher but do you know what? They're gonna give you the solution of borrowing more money and for you to invest more properties. And this is how some people buy one, two, three properties and some people only stuck at one or two. Yes, there are people out there that have purchased property under a trust structure and they can only stay at the tier one lenders. But if you watch the video, purchasing under a trust structure is actually a lot more harder now than back when the rates were very low. And certain criteria has to be met to keep borrowing under trust and under another trust and under another trust. Therefore, if you have no interest in borrowing under a trust structure and want to keep borrowing under your individual name so you can reap the negative gearing benefits, then that's what you have to do. You have to maximize yourself with a tier one lender, then match yourself with a tier two lender, 
then ensuring that you've structured yourself correctly in the tier one and tier two lenders, then go to your tier three lenders to get more borrowing power. Like I said to you, the rates are higher by using a tier two and tier three lender. But you have to understand that is actually the cost of doing business. If you want the loan, if you want the asset and the major lenders cannot give you the loan anymore, then yes, you, you got no other choice. And you have to go to your second and third tier lenders. And I repeat again, it's the cost of doing business. So tier two lenders are generally around 0.5 to 0.7% higher than major lenders. And with your third tier lenders, you're looking at anywhere between one to one and a half percent higher than major lenders. But do you know what? Those costs are irrelevant when your property is growing by 20%. And let me give you one example how using a second tier lender increased my client's wealth substantially in a 12 month period. So she was already maxed out with a borrowing power on a major lender. So therefore we had to go to a second tier lender. That second tier lender was able to give her a loan of $520,000. Yes, the rate was gonna be 0.75% higher. And the difference in yearly repayments between the second tier lender and a major lender was around $3,850 per year. She actually used that $520,000 and purchased a property in WA. And what happened in WA in the last 12 months? Property prices went up by at least 20% in WA the last 12 months. So let's just use her loan amount of $520,000 as an example and that went up by 20% in value the last 12 months. So that $520,000 now equates to $624,000. So in the space of 12 months, her wealth just increased by $104,000 minimum. And you got people out there complaining about paying an extra $3,850 per year. And if you're telling me you will not spend an extra $3,850 on interest repayments on a second tier lender and get an asset that increased by 20%, hey, there's something wrong with you. Like I said to you, it's the cost of doing business. Nothing's for free in this world. So when people come to me and go to, but Tony, how does people do it? Buying three, four, five properties. Well, this is how they do it. They use second and third tier lenders to maximize their borrowing power, even though the rates are going to be a little bit higher. So one thing I do have to tell you is, don't ever compare yourself with other people. We always get people in our appointments, get a bit deflated because they can't afford to buy two, three, four or five properties and they want to compare themselves to other investors out there. But what I always say to them is, just worry about yourself. And the most important thing is, you know nothing about these people. You know nothing about those people financially or you don't know what they've purchased or what sort of structure they've used. For example, you don't know what the income is. You don't know how much savings they have. You don't know if their parents gave them money or not. More importantly, you don't know what the value of the property they purchased is. Because in your head, you might think they've purchased properties worth five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000. But really, they've only purchased the properties for two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000, right? And I'm gonna give another example. I've got one client that has two properties only worth a million dollars each. And I've got another client that's got five properties, but hey, do you know what? The value of each property is only around 300 to 350. So now you tell me, who do you think is better? It's not always about the number of properties. It's about the value of the properties. And you should never compare yourself to others because that's one way to really, really, really deflate yourself. So there you have it guys, that is how you maximize your borrowing power under your individual name. And I'll repeat again, you'll maximize your borrowing potential under a major lender, let's call it a tier one lender. Then you'll go to your second tier lenders. Then you'll go to your third tier lenders. Yes, second and third tier lenders, the rates are gonna be higher. Don't get me wrong. But you know what, doesn't mean you're stuck with them forever. You know, if rates drop, if your income increase, if you've paid down your owner occupied loan, then that gives you the opportunity to refinance your loans from second and third tier lenders back to a major lender. So what I always say to people in these situations is it could be short-term pain for long-term gain. So there you have it guys and I thank you and I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Mortgage Chat and I hope to see you next time.